Hi everyone, and I'm back to talk about a new build of mine. This little box here. This is a GPS tracker. It has a little battery, it has a cellular modem, and it's designed to track a vehicle. In this case, mostly my car, but occasionally my motorbike. Why do I want a GPS tracker? Well, it's mostly because I'm a bit of a stats nerd. I like seeing where I'm going, altitude, speeds, and that kind of thing. But it's also just generally fun information, and there's always a small chance that if the car gets stolen, it'll help. Now, there are commercial solutions out there for this. In fact, there are loads of commercial solutions out there for this. I even have one given to me as a present a few years ago. But the problem is that one is 2G. And the 2G network, at least here in the US, is slowly being turned off. And so I wanted a 3G solution. And if you look around, there are 3G solutions. There's quite a few of them. There's some that have good apps, but they all cost quite a lot per month. And, you know, it's no fun to buy a solution off the shelf. And so my philosophy was, let's take some components, let's build something off the shelf and make a GPS tracker that's not only quite a low cost in terms of parts, but is also a very low cost month to month. And so I ended up with this. I'll show you the components in a second, but it's essentially a small plastic box I had lying around. We have a cellular modem and Arduino compatible chip, the particle electron. I'll talk about that later. We have an Adafruit GPS chip in here as well as well as a small lithium-ion battery and a few bits of breadboard to see how it works. So I'm going to pull it apart and we'll have a look inside and I'll walk through the components. So now we've got it open, we can take a look inside and see the various components that make it up. Now, you'll notice two main things as soon as you look inside here. First of all is this. This is the Adafruit Ultimate GPS Breakout. It's a small GPS chip with a little antenna and a serial communicator on a little breakout board. I had this lying around, but it's also a pretty good board, so I'd recommend it for this particular project. Over here, we have a particle electron. Now, the particle electron is a lovely little device. Not only is it an Arduino-compatible microcontroller, but it also comes with a 3G modem, a support suite written by Particle that lets you send web hooks and receive events to it. It even has the ability to flash over the air, which is great, if not slightly scary, but in my experience works very well, at least until I sent bad code and had to go and find it, pull it out and actually flash it the normal or boring way. There's a few other bits in here as well, if you look closely. There is a lithium ion battery right here. That doesn't let it run for too long by itself, but it gives it about two or three hours of extra time to run once the car engine is off. There's a small USB breakout board up here that lets you have a USB port on the outside of the box. And there's an antenna connector, which is literally just a micro adapter from the connection on the Adafruit board to a standard small SMA screw thread out here. What this means is I can just literally take a normal uh, GPS antenna and screw it in. There's also up here an extra LED. This LED is there from a previous project this case was used for, but it's still useful. So I tied it into the signal acquired LED on the Adafruit GPS module. It basically flashes red when it's trying to get a lock, and it flashes red less often once it gets a lock. Now, unfortunately, I built this and glued it in before I managed to show everything on video pulled apart, but the wiring in here is not too complicated. I'll try and point you through it, and I'll throw a diagram on screen to help you as well. So first of all, we have a couple of power rails at the top here. Now, the power comes in from the USB connector. There's a ground and a plus five volt rail from that one. We pop them on the power rails up here and it runs along and it goes to the V in of the electron module here. And it also goes to the V in of the Adafruit GPS module. There's also a couple of data rails. We take the number one serial port on the particle electron and we pull it over to run into the input-output serial ports of the Adafruit GPS module. And finally, the few extra wires up here which just go over here to the LED. There's not much else, that's pretty much it. All you need is that power and that serial communication and the LED even itself is an optional extra. Most of the work here is in the code, so let's go and have a quick look at the code and see roughly how that's written. So here's the code in the online particle IDE. Don't worry about looking too closely. I'm going to put this up on GitHub if you look at it afterwards. But let me walk you through some of the basic parts of the code. And of course, like all good projects, it's all in one file. First of all, we should look at the fact that it has a pretty standard Arduino-like setup. There's a setup function, which runs once at the beginning of the execution of the program, and a loop function, which runs continuously as long as the microcontroller is active. Now, it's written in a very similar way to the Arduino libraries, but there's a few differences. 
First of all, we have these serial one commands, which let you talk to the other serial ports on the Electron. The standard serial port here is the sort of USB serial zero. And there's a one, two, and I believe also maybe a five and a three and a four as well. Here I've just used serial one because it's hardware serial. And we're at 9,600 board because that's what our modem speaks. Then we have the particle part of this. Now, these are optional extras here, but they register functions you can call on demand from the particle web interface. So in particular, I have a couple of things here. These bottom two, let me arbitrarily set one of the variables in my program remotely. This particular variable is how often it updates when I'm moving. So I can say, hey, for this drive, make it every 20 seconds rather than every 60 seconds. And then these other two functions here both let me have on-demand location. The top one is an optional extra cell locator, which I wrote just in case the GPS is offline. And the bottom one is an optional on-demand GPS locator if for some reason the automatic stuff isn't working. The key part of the code, though, is down here in the loop. Here we have the continuous loop where we feed information into the GPS library. That's done here in smart delay, as I'll show you in a second. And then every five seconds, the loop comes back round. And then if you have a USB console plugged in, prints out some information, and then works out if it has to send. Now, there's a couple of different conditions here to work out if you need to send. It both works out if there's been a maximum time since the last send at all. That's called stationary delay. And as you can see up here, that is set by default to 30 minutes. There's a second moving delay, which here is set to 60 seconds. And that is, if the car is moving, then send more often. This lets you have good tracking when you're moving while not wasting too much battery life or data on pinging where a stationary vehicle is for three hours. It's just parked there. So this first if segment here just says, hey, if it's been long enough since our last send, then just send it because of the stationary delay. And down here, we have an extra thing that says, well, OK, if it's been at least that moving delay and the GPS has a valid lock, and then if either our latitude difference is bigger than our delta, which is done in basically a percentage of degrees, but it's about 100 meters, I believe, on this one, or if our speed is more than 10 knots, then also send. And basically, all this comes to is, as long as you're moving at a reasonable speed or you've moved enough since your last report in, you'll ping every minute where you are. And all of these boil down to a single Boolean up here, needs send, which they set. And that is then sent down here to say, hey, if we do have needs send, then go and send the location. Let's go and look at that. So here is send location. It's a pretty basic function. All it's doing is basically formatting all the information from our GPS library, which handily handles all the low-level talking with the GPS module and decoding the lines it sends into actual numbers for us. We take all of those and put them into a big old JSON string. Now, the reason this is JSON is because Particle has a built-in integration with webhooks. So what we actually do here is we take this big JSON string and send it via particle.publish. And this basically puts it into an event stream in Particle. What you can then do is, say, hook up that event stream to a webhook and say, when you get an event, take these JSON things, put them in this template, and send it to this URL. This saves me having to do a whole HTTP negotiation here and work out this SSL and send information. I can just blast the JSON off to Particle and have their servers do the rest of the work for me, which is really handy. And so all we do is format the JSON, send it off, and then record where and when we last sent our, our location. And if we haven't got a lock, if you notice there is a is valid line here, we actually do still ping the server. We just say what time it is and how many satellites we can see. This means that even if there isn't actually a valid GPS lock, you can still tell the devices online and looking for satellites. Finally, let's look at smart delay. This is that custom delay function as you saw up ahead. All it basically does is just make sure that while we're waiting and spending that five seconds between loops, we are continuously feeding bytes from the serial interface into our GPS library. So that's all this does right here. So it says while there's bytes on the serial interface, just take them, read them in, and give them to the GPS library. And inside that GPS library, it handles all the different decoding of all the different strings and units and letting you do things, saying things easily like, hey, give me my course in degrees or give me my speed in knots, rather than having to work out them from the basic units the GPS module works in. So that's the code. There's not a lot to it. As I said, it's up on GitHub. You can go there, check it out. There's a bit more of a readme there telling you a bit more about it and how to use it. 
but it's a very simple couple of hundred lines making a lot of use of both the built-in particle functionality and also the wonderful tiny GPS++ library, which honestly does a lot of heavy lifting here. This is one of those great cases where programming really is much more about gluing code together than writing it yourself from scratch. Now, I have to take a moment here to talk about the particle electron. It's honestly one of the reasons this project is made so easy, and it really is a lovely little device. It comes in this small little box, not only do you get the electron, you get a battery, you get the 3G antenna, you get the little breadboard I showed you in the box as well. It comes with all you really need to do a basic kit by itself. It even comes with three months of free data and Particle don't really lock you in too much. They do have this ecosystem of their own SIM card and their own web hooks, but if you want, you can just put any old SIM card in there and have it talk to their servers. I believe you can even put a Google Fi SIM card in there, which I have an account with them and just use the free extra data you get with your account. If you want to, you can even write your own low-level software, but honestly, I found their stuff, the flashing included, to be really good. If I have a small bug fix, like I had when I was up in the mountains and it was snowing outside, I can just go to my computer, write the fix, hit flash, and it will sit there, ping the device over the internet, upload the software to it, and tell me when it's completed. And more importantly, tell me when it's failed too, so I have to go outside in the snow and trudge and get the device as I did once. It's really quite good. There are other ways to do this. Anything that has a cellular modem will do the same kind of thing, but you'll have to write some of the software yourself. In particular, the fact that I can just have my device ping a simple command to Particle, and then they handle the HTTP webhook command to and from my server has been really useful. So if you're thinking about this stuff, these are really good. So consider that. As to the device itself, I've taken it now and about 500 miles of driving. It's performed pretty well. I did used to have an extra USB battery on the side strapped to it for extra power, but it turned out that battery didn't like charging and discharging simultaneously. So since then, I've just taken off the battery and plugged it straight into my car's USB power. So it comes on when the ignition goes on and it turns off when the ignition goes off. There is a side effect. This lithium ion battery on the side here is only tied to the actual electron. It's not tied to the GPS module. They can't get enough output from the battery to power both of them at once. What that means is when the engine turns off, you lose GPS tracking, but you still have access to the electron and its cellular modem. If it was a real life scenario where someone had stolen the car, or maybe you just want to know where it was, I also have written an extra thing that lets you ping the electron and work out where it is from cellular towers. It sort of integrates with the Google Maps API and a lot of their data to work out where things are. So there is a fallback there. But at the end of the day, the battery is more to keep things okay. And more importantly, the particle is quite a high power device when it's both sending data and also trying to do a lot of processing at once, it needs a lot of power. And so you actually have to have a lithium ion battery there to help it peek through those high current situations. If you just use a USB draw, it might undervolt itself and start rebooting itself. And that's basically it for this build. There's a couple of bugs with the device, in particular my code for send the location more often when you're moving doesn't quite seem to work right. So if you wanna go in the GitHub repo and take a look, be my guest. Any debugging help there is appreciated. But in general, it works really well. As I said, it's done 500 miles. It's been from here to the mountains and back. It's been around San Francisco. It honestly seems to perform quite well. It gets a lot within a minute of going outside, which is pretty good considering it hasn't got any assistance to sort of lock onto cellular towers and get GPS or a GPS that way. And I'm pretty happy with it. I might try and take it off this sort of temporary breadboard and solder it in properly. My Jeep is an off-road vehicle part of the time. There's a lot of vibration when you're going off-road, especially on washboarded roads. And so that tends to be a failure mode of things I've built into the car myself and not really thought through. But honestly, I'm pretty happy. I have bought a second Electron for a new project with my motorbike. Uh, in that case, it would be a combination GPS tracker and probably battery voltage monitor. My bike is 10 stories below me and the battery tends to discharge a bit too much as I don't ride it quite as much as I should have especially when it's been raining outside recently. And so I want to have it monitor the battery and send me alerts when that battery goes down. I'll do a video on that as well, probably. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed this build and I'll see you next time.